Batman Beyond Return of the Joker, what many consider the best movie in the DC animated universe. There are a lot of things in this universe that we can all agree are good, if not great, but this, for a lot of people, takes the cake. And even for me, I think this is the best movie in this universe. Why is it that people look at this movie and give it so much praise? Is it really that good? Hmm? Well, it is, but we'll get into that. So, let's begin. It all started in the mid-2000s. After the release of the Batman Beyond television show, Warner Home Video approached the DCAU team to come up with a Batman Beyond movie. After saying, uh, yes, to the offer, they began work. It was decided that the Batman of the future, Terry McGuinness, had to face something big that he had never faced before. And who better to face than the original Batman's greatest enemy, the Joker. After going through production hell, the movie was finally complete and screened to test audiences, which tested it as very, very violent, and so had to be changed severely. More on that later. The movie released on December 12th, 2000. The plot of this movie is very inspired. A new gang of Jokers were causing trouble in Gotham. The Batman of the future, Terry McGuinness, were foiling their plans. Little did he and old man Bruce Wayne know that they were working for someone very, very dangerous. When Bruce was announcing his return to Wayne Enterprises, they were attacked by the Jokers. And it's here where Bruce is reunited with his old enemy, the Joker. After the party, Terry goes to see the current commissioner, Barbara Gordon, aka Bad Girl, who basically tells him to fuck off and mind his own business. Meanwhile in the Batcave, Bruce is desperately trying to figure out if this is somehow the real Joker, or just another duplicate. And afterwards tells Terry to give him back the Batsuit because this is too dangerous of a job for him. Later on, the Joker's gang attack Terry at a party, and the real Joker attacks Bruce at the manor. The next morning, Barbara tells Terry about the Joker and who he really is. And we get a lovely little flashback to the olden days. In this flashback, the Joker and Harley Quinn kidnap the current Robin, Tim Drake. After three weeks of searching, Batman and Batgirl are invited to the old Arkham Asylum, where we see the Joker has completely brainwashed Tim. After showing a video about how he did it, Bruce attacks him. After stabbing him with a knife, he hands Tim a gun to finish the job, but accidentally shoots Joker instead, causing even more trauma to Tim Drake's head. Yay! Going back to the future, Terry interrogates Tim Drake. After finding out where the Joker's hideout is, it's revealed that Tim Drake is the new Joker, and explains that the original Joker coated the chip in his neck with all his DNA. After Joker gets the upper hand, Terry shocks the chip, turning Drake back to normal. And by the end of the film, the old gang managed to bury the Batarang, and Terry flies off into Gotham. Yeah, that's... that's a great plot. I, I like it. like it a lot. Now let's talk about the characters and their actors. Terry McGuinness, aka Batman, is portrayed by Will Fidel, as he is in the show. And he's pretty on call with his TV counterpart. Bruce Wayne is once again being played by Kevin Conroy, as he is in the animated series. And, once again, he is great. And of course we have the Joker, played by Mark Hamill, and is just as great as he always is. Well, most of the time anyway. We also have Tara Strong returning as Batgirl, Arlene Sorkin returning as Harley Quinn, Angie Harmon as the current Commissioner Gordon, etc, etc. All of these people are just so great in the role. Will Fidel is great as Terry McGuinness, Kevin Conroy is great as Batman, ex Bruce Wayne as he always is, Mark Hamill is great as the Joker as he always is, etc, etc. You all know what I'm gonna say. They're great. The soundtrack for this movie is on another level. I'm not going to play it because of copyright reasons, but I'm just going to link it in the description. Everything in this movie is live orchestrated, like it is in the original animated series. And like in that show, the music is amazing. I recommend you listen to it. It's some great stuff. I guess I should talk about the censored cut. The movie I was just talking about was the uncut, uncensored version of Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. When the movie was released, however, it was actually a censored, more child-friendly version. 
lot of blood was censored out, a lot of dialogue had to be redone, and the biggest change of all was the Joker's death scene. In the original, Tim Drake shot him. In the remake, he was electrocuted to death. The reason behind these changes was because the CEO of Warner Home Video at the time thought that the movie had too much violence in it and was unsuitable for children, and if it didn't get changed, it wouldn't be marketed. And, well, this was the mid-2000s, and we didn't have the internet back then, so TV was the only way that kids were going to get able to see the movie. So they had to censor it. And that's how we ended up with two different versions of the movie. I have no idea which one Warner Bros. labels as the canonical version, but I'm assuming that it's the uncensored one, seeing as this is the only one that's available on streaming. The Watchtower database did an excellent video explaining all the differences between the censored cut and the uncensored cut. I'll link that video down in the description, it's a jolly good watch. So in conclusion, Batman Beyond Return of the Joker has to be one of the greatest movies in the DC animated universe, and just one of the greatest Batman movies of all time. It's a very, very inspired story. My overall ratings for this movie are an 8.5 out of 10. It's a great movie with some great characters, a great soundtrack, and two different versions. You know, like Star Wars, in a way. I recommend you give this movie a watch. It is great.